Welcome to Happiness in the City. This is Barbara and today I'd like to focus our attention on a very interesting concept and that is concept of virtue. In Rome sometimes people used um, the word virtu but virtue um, was very important concept in Roman Empire but also in Israel and in Christianity and then I've read about a world um, religions um, and this concept appears almost everywhere where there is a human um, expression of beauty of creation. Let's go to the definition of <clears throat> first okay here we have the definition virtue and in this um, particular definition uh, it is um, defined as behavior showing high moral standards. Uh, for traditional Christian angelology, the seventh highest order of the ninefold celestial hierarchy. And that is fascinating uh, knowledge to have, to have the affirmation that the existence of virtue is from the highest level of um, God's appreciation of those high moral standards. And clearly virtues exist in the kingdom of God. So we can have the connection between uh, how virtues understood on earth and how angels who are called virtues express it in kingdom of God. It really is fascinating. Uh, I have been um, developing my knowledge of Christianity directly with presence of the Holy Spirit. So I'm very fortunate in this. But uh, when I grew up in G the city of Gdansk, it was illegal to teach Christianity in schools. Though so Poland, where I grew up, is a Christian nation of a thousand years. And this was the first time in the history of Poland that that kind of prohibition um, was imposed on the educational system. When you uh, look at people like Maria Curie-Skłodowska who uh, discovered um, radioactivity, Nikola Copernicus who created all that knowledge that um, astronomers still use today about the Earth and uh, the Earth's relationship to the Sun the uh, rotations of the earth, all of those things that uh, we take for granted. And those are just two examples. There are many other examples of great teachers and education from that part of the world um, that uh, for hundreds of years was also homeland for Israel. So um, the level of high intelligent um, highly intelligent thinking is very grounded in the presence of God in the context of knowledge. And then after World War II there was this atheism imposed on schools. So the whole foundation of how virtue was understood for more than a thousand years in Poland was suddenly 
uh, undermined by concept of atheism. In other words, virtue that would be replaced by a sense of atheistic justice. And that created huge um, confusion uh, among people in that part of the world because they are used to the concept of virtue. And suddenly, they had to um, be judged by, uh, by uh, standards, moral standards that come from the concept of justice defined by laws um, invented only in civil codes without any uh, connection to the Christian and uh, Jewish heritage of that uh, beautiful land. So I ended up going to schools in which you couldn't talk about God, so it meant we couldn't read the Bible. But I was very lucky because my school was right next door to Roman Catholic Church. So on the way to school, I would say a prayer to God to be with me throughout this whole educational process. And on the way back to school, I would sometimes go to church and pray, sometimes just pass by the church, but uh, every kid in Poland at that time was taught to do this sign, the sign of the cross in front of any holy place. So I began my day with God going to that atheistic school and I ended my educational day by thanking God for this education. So it was a very strange experience. And at that time, school was six days a week, not five days a week like it is now. So six days a week, I was going to school, thinking about God. Then during the classes, uh, knowing that knowledge about God is repressed. And then on the way home, I was back in freedom about connection to God. So it really was very strange. And when I was preparing for this program, I realized that what this created was lack of focus on the concepts of virtue in the development of educational um, reason, scientific understanding, and that created a um, situation that lasts till today in which people have a hard time connecting measures of be behavior to what traditionally comes from this part of the world, to the concepts of virtue. People talk about justice, uh, trying to, if something bad happens, they try to sue somebody or ban somebody or as social media does, social uh, shadow ban somebody. But the, there's no understanding about the alternative, which is classical heritage of virtue. In other words, creating standards of measurement that would help the person go in the direction of virtue rather than ban a person. And when you go to church, God doesn't ban you. He shows you matters of um, what is sacred in his eyes his presence in, in the church. But when you are in school, you just are supposed to focus on that godless system of justice. And you either obey the laws that that um, strange justice forces you to obey, or you are toast. 
you are thrown out of school, get bad grades, and all kinds of weird things can happen to a person, whereas our ancestors didn't have to deal with this because all the teachers were trained in the concepts of virtue. Before I go to the, uh, the Wikipedia article on virtue, which is amazing, I encourage you to read it. Uh, let's look at the um, definition of virtue by Merriam Webster. And here we have um, conformity to a standard of right morality, particular moral excellence, a beneficial quality or power of a thing. Um, manly strength or courage, uh, uh, or, um, or courage, valor, but in this particular case manly means um, applied to um, all human beings. Manly uh, in this traditional sense didn't mean that only for men, but for men and women to show the courage that uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth um, taught us to uh, have. A commitment, uh, quality, or trait, merit, a capacity to act, potency, and um, the most difficult one, chastity, especially in a woman. And virtues in the divine sense was celestial, uh, an order of angels, uh, part of celestial hierarchy. And uh, the the uh, word used traditionally also that survived in our modern communication is by virtue of, or in virtue of, through the force of, or by authority of virtue. So this is really fascinating and I encourage you to think about it because we need to find communication that is based on higher order of measurement than what we have today because what we have today frankly is rather ridiculous when i get on social media i have to be so cautious about every word i say and it was and in some ways it's even worse than in that atheistic school i had to go through so um we have to come back to the notion of development of virtues that are higher than that very uh, primitive system of um, laws that um, measure behavior only on the basis of obedience to that particular law. And those laws are not very good. There are some very good laws, but uh, most of the laws that we have today are bad laws. Um, disconnected from politics, disconnected from religion, um, focusing primarily on flesh uh, communication uh, without any higher level of virtues and, um, and uh, ways. And that created general tiredness. People are tired um, in their daily life, in their uh, language, because that they are suppressed in the high level of virtues and then they are forced, they are free to obey really bad laws. So what kind of freedom is that? Um, and I think that uh, we are at a point that we have to create a higher vision of communication or people will uh, be uh, so frightened of being judged in their speech and language that they will stop talking much at all, which is not good because then they will not be able to develop their reasoning. And churches are also not really doing much. There are some churches that do, that created universities and doing the best they can, but they, um, they don't have that freedom they used to have uh, in pre-atheistic um, times where they could really develop um, schools and universities free um, 
there are some things that are happening now that um, are coming back to that ancient tradition of uh, highly sophisticated education that includes uh, divine heritage, and that is a good sign. Um, but I just wish that more was being done. I, I still have difficulty reading the Bible because it was so prohibited in the time when I was in education that I do know its value and I read it, but not with the same uh, passion as uh, when I um, read uh, a scientific journal. And yet the biblical foundation is essential to understand most of European uh, literature and um, uh, language. It's impossible to understand English literature and American literature without knowledge of the Bible. Uh, so I know how uh, powerful the need for liberty to return to virtues as foundational standard is and to abandon what we have today, uh, judging everything on the basis of obedience to some um, strange laws. I think that laws should not replace virtues. There is place for certain um, uh, things that should be organized by legal system, but legal systems should not organize behavior as replacement to virtues. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, let's look at Wikipedia article on virtues, virtue, and Okay, here it is. Virtue. And you see, it's a very long article. And uh, basically, uh, in this particular article, you uh, read the entire history and complexity connected with the concept of virtue. One of the great things about virtue is that it creates a standard that helps us define what vice is. But traditional virtues were uh, a standard that was also redemptive, that could um, direct a person to learn higher ways than vice. Uh, today, when something is defined as bad, the instant response is condemnation, destruction, um, removal, banning, forcing a person to leave. Whereas in, in the uh, heritage and tradition of virtues would have the educational way of leading a person into uh, beautiful ways. So the current system that we have blocks ways of development of the right ways. And that is what is causing so much rage and anger. That rage and anger is not because somebody did something bad. It is because something very powerful is suppressed within our um, spirits, within our hearts. When I'm trying to heal some of the wounds from the past around matters of standards, I realized how much damage was done by blocking my education from um, connection to Christian and Jewish heritage. And that is something that you have to have at the developmental level to become a part of ease with which you deal with your heritage. And when this is blocked, it creates this 
um, division between the current generation and spiritual heritage, uh, the um, the harmony of what our what we have today and what our ancestors uh, gave us in our bloodlines. And that is the main reason for so much rage and outrage and um, and then also depression because people feel that within their hearts they cannot connect and inherit something that is very beautiful, very noble and very powerful. Um, let's um, look at um, the Roman, Greece Roman antiquity. I just wanted you to see how uh, complex the knowledge of virtues was. This is the Roman virtues. Okay. Uh, and we have um, virtues names. Octoritas, which is spiritual authority. Comtas, humor. Constantia, perseverance. Clementia, mercy. Dignitas, dignity. Disciplina, discipline. Fides, good faith. Firmitas, tenacity. Frugalitas, frugality. Gravitas, gravity. Honestas, respectability. Human, humanitas, humanity. Industria, innocencia, selfless. Uh, industria is, uh, industriousness, hard work. Um, Leticia, joy, gladness, nobilitas, nobility, justitia, justice, pietas, dutifulness, um, prudencia, prudence, salubritas, wholesomeness, severitas, stemness, veritas, truthfulness, virtues as manliness. Virtu. So this is just uh, a little example of how uh, sophisticated this heritage is, and this is just from Rome. And we also have um, the heritage in which those virtues were transformed to um, the uh, sovereignty of God, spiritual authority of God, because uh, Constantine the I, the emperor of Rome, was converted by the Holy Spirit to Christianity, and he simply transformed the tradition of the Roman Empire to um, the light from kingdom of God. But a lot of the good things that uh, were inherited uh, by Roman emperors were preserved because they are good. And God says um, in the Bible, throughout the Bible, but also new in uh, New Testament that it's desirable to search for good things, for beautiful things, for noble things. So virtues are good, beautiful, and noble things. So we should focus on applying them to our uh, current ways, and we should abandon that atheistic, um, very um, um, mean way of focusing every standard of behavior on uh, whether something is a crime or is not a crime. In this particular system of behavior, even love became a crime, which is really strange because throughout all cultures of the world, throughout all generations, love is always expression of beautiful connection. So. It always uh, is um, praised as something that that is good, and I think that in closing, I will also tell you about the three virtues in Christian world, which is love, faith, and hope, and those three virtues are so much higher than any limiting concepts of um, crime, that we should come back to bring them to the 
creation of the system of justice. In this particular uh, case, uh, just justitia is one of the virtues, but it, it's just one of the virtues. There are so many other virtues. So what I'm saying is that justice shouldn't be a replacement for all the other virtues. Let's restore our knowledge about beautiful 